Hi everybody, sorry for the delay. Um, I hope all of you can see me and hear me. I think the, the streaming volume was just a bit high. Everybody uh, everybody's on the internet. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chi Leong and I'm gonna be taking you through this next one hour uh, to talk a little bit about how to manage stress during this MCO. So uh, I hope all of you are tuning in I just want to begin from the offset to acknowledge uh, my colleagues in uh, Real Education and 3KDU. This was really meant to be one of our uh, in-house training workshops uh, that we have regularly with our staff. And uh, of course, during this MCO crisis, I can't be there face to face. So we thought we have our training for this week uh, virtually and uh, that we also invite anybody from the public to want to join. So I, I want to welcome uh, you know, all of you to this one hour session uh, to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some tips um, for uh, ensuring that our ment mental well-being is protected and we are managing stress during this uh, rather challenging time, you know, during the uh, movement, movement control order. Uh, I see that you've got many people joining us from different parts of the world. So I want to welcome some of my former students. I recognize some of my former colleagues. It's great to connect with all of you today. So without further ado, let me just start all right, by uh, uh, maybe framing the topic to say that I think that the challenge and the difficulty um, you know, for um, working from home for many people and for being confined to our home, uh, there are really a couple of things that we need to deal with. Right? So I think number one, it's about the isolation and the fact that most of us are not used to being restricted uh, in, in such a way, you know, so being at home all the time, uh, many of us can't leave our homes, you know, some of you live in apartments, you know, uh, it, it, it becomes a bit claustrophobic after a while. I think number two is, is the issue of the uncertainty, you know, so um, we talk about a VUCA environment. Uh, I know colleagues who have worked with me over the last few years know that this is one of my favorite words. I, I learned this from my former boss, Dr. Chan. We talked a lot about the VUCA world. Uh, the term VUCA actually came from military training, and by the way, so you know, 20, 30 years ago, they used to uh, teach this to uh, military officers and leaders. Uh, you know, the idea was that in, in a time of combat and war, the battlefield is a VUCA environment. So VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and I think really speaks to you know the times that we are going through this year. A lot of things are really uncertain, you know, I mean, even before the COVID crisis, whether it was political change or economic uncertainty or, you know, now we are facing, of course, a worldwide pandemic. Uh, but I think the idea that we are living in a world that, that has this level of complexity and so many moving parts and it's so difficult to predict and every day something new is happening. And, and so I think when we talk about managing stress during this COVID period, it's not just about dealing with the isolation, but also dealing with the uncertainty, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I think for, for many uh, colleagues of mine, many friends of mine, the uncertainty is as unnerving and as stressful as, you know, uh, as being, you know, uh, locked in our own houses as well, right? So I've got eight tips that I want to share today. Now, I've looked around and, and there are some really, really fantastic material that you can download from the, the internet, you know, uh, most of the psychological associations, counseling associations from all over the world have published some really uh, top-notch material about, you know, uh, how to keep mentally healthy during, you know, uh, uh, this COVID crisis uh, and, uh, and how do you manage stress. And, and so I, I think, look, that there's no shortage of material out there, some really good tips, hundreds of really good ideas. Uh, so uh, I want to say from the offset, I mean, my eight tips here are by no way comprehensive, you know, uh, or exhaustive. Uh, they are really meant as, uh, I think, what I think are, are useful, maybe to add to, to, you know, a lot of the other things that I've already read on the internet. All right. So let's go through the tips together one by one. All right. So tip number one um, is to focus on what you can control. I, I think... Uh, one of the main sources of stress during a time like this is uh, the fact that there are so many things beyond our control. 
uh, the pandemic, the the recession, the economic situation, uh, and and I think it, it's it's very natural that all of us feel a little bit helpless. Uh, we feel you know uh, like victims of circumstance, you know, uh, a bit like leaves that are sort of drifting in the sea and just being taken back and forth based on the currents. Uh, and I think that's a very natural way to feel, but it, it's really important um, to therefore focus on our sphere of control. You know? so, so we say that you know, there are certain things in life you can't control. Uh, in this particular period, you can't control the fact that there is a pandemic that is going on worldwide. The fact that you know a lot of us in different parts of the world here in Malaysia, we've got a, a, a sort of a, a lockdown, a control movement order so that, you know, uh, uh, control. I mean, movement is limited. Many of us can't leave the houses except to to buy groceries or to get food. You know, uh, we can't go back to our offices. The fact that the schools are closed. You know, so a lot of these things. Um, you know, that that's not under my control. The fact that I have to be in my house for many hours a day, I can't control that. But I need to really therefore focus on what I can control, which is what do I choose to do while I'm in my house. You know, uh, I can't control the fact that, you know, my work environment now has changed because you can't go back to the office, but I can control the fact uh, of how I choose to work. So my work style is under my control. You know, I, I can't control the fact that I might not be able to be face to face with certain loved ones, you know, certain family members, uh, friends, colleagues, but I can control how I choose to maybe communicate and stay connected to them online, right? So, so I think that the, the principle here, and this is a very common principle, I mean, most stress management courses anywhere in the world would include this principle. It's about discerning what is under your control and what is not under your control, and then choosing to really focus on what you can control. Um, uh, some of us are acquainted with that famous prayer of serenity, right? You know, that reads, uh, you know, give me the... the uh, serenity to accept the things that I can't control and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to discern between the two. And, and I think that really holds true for a situation like, like now where there are a lot of things that you can't control. I mean, you know, a lot of us are worried about things like the coming global recession, you know, what the impact of the virus is going to have on our economies, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of friends that are worried about their businesses going bankrupt, you know, whether they can stay solvent throughout this three, six month period. I, I know many friends who are worried about whether they still have jobs, you know, after three, six months, you know. Uh, and so I, I, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things that we can't control like the economy. You know, but during times like this, especially, it's important then to focus on the things that we can do. And you find that even in the most trying circumstances, even in the most challenging circumstances, there are always things that we can focus on uh, that, that we are within our, our, our control. So like I say, you know, as a good case in point, we can't control the fact that our movement is, is restricted and most of us are confined to our houses. But how we choose to use our time while in this physical location, uh, that's still within my control. You know, so what time I choose to wake up and, and how I choose to work and, and who I choose to, uh, you know, stay connected to and, 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 you know, how I choose to exercise within my own home. You know, all of these are things that are still within my sphere of control and influence, you know. Uh, some psychologists talk about, you know, the, the, the locus of control, right, you know, and, and it's about expanding that locus of control. It's about being aware uh, of the different things that I can do that, that are within my power. And, and I think that's really an uh, important thing to do. You know, focus on what is within my power to do. Focus on what I can control, you know, and, and, and stop, you know, in a sense, focusing and thinking too much about all of the different things that I'm, I'm helpless to change, you know, because I think the danger here is that sometimes the more we choose to dwell on a lot of the stuff that we can't control, and, and sometimes you can actually, you know, sink into this pit of despair and helplessness and, 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 and depression almost because, you know, your, your mind is, is on all of these big problems and issues that really I have no influence over, you know. So it's really important to focus on 
I can say the small things within my sphere of control. You know, I can focus on taking care of my health. I can focus on how I spend time every day. I can focus on how I reach out to people. I can focus on how to, to develop my, my mind and you know, continue to learn things while I'm in lockdown. So tip number one, focus on what you can control. Right? Number two, it's really important now. So this is about uh, you know, social support. And, and particularly in a period where we may feel a bit isolated because, you know, we are away from colleagues, away from friends. We can't, you know, uh, in a sense, go out and, and do the normal social activities that we are used to. Um, it's really important to stay connected. And in a sense, I mean, we are blessed to be in an age where staying connected has never been easier now compared to, let's say, 30, 40 years ago. I mean, I remember when you know, 30 years ago when, when you know, I was in New Zealand and, and, you know, we were studying in university. And in those days, this was pre pre internet pre email you know in those days phone calls were ex extremely expensive to make and and I, I think that was a world where you really were isolated so unless you were physically with people you know i mean even to make a phone call would be you know two three hundred ringgit to make overseas and and so you just didn't do that you wrote letters to one another and every two three weeks you, you pray that you receive a letter and that was the only way to stay connected to friends and, and relatives but I mean now you live in an age where everybody picks up a smartphone and within a second whether it's through whatsapp or, or through you know zoom or through facebook like what we're doing right now immediately you know all of us are able to see one another we're able to hear one another so I, I think that that's that's really a, a blessing that we can count ourselves lucky to have in, in this day and age that even though physically we may be isolated uh, I, I know that we are in a sense all still connected and and look, I'm talking beyond office and because I know, you know, uh, in our work settings, we are still connected in a sense that, I mean, we are still, you know, I mean, we are still, you know, having Zoom meetings and, and lots and lots of meetings. In fact, I, I was just remarking to my staff that I don't think I've had as much meetings during this MCO than I have, you know, when we were actually face to face in the office. Huh? So the funny thing is that, I mean, in this MCO, you know, it seems to me that we are even more connected than, than we've ever, ever been, right? You know, so, so I think the idea here is that, um, the idea here is that it's not just, I think, the office and our colleagues that we need to have the discipline to stay connected to. During this isolation period, it's incredibly important to, you know, be connected to your usual support social support network so your friends and your relatives and obviously i'm talking about people that are not staying in your house you know physically with you every day but but your friends and your relatives it it takes discipline it takes effort but it's really well worth the effort you know and so um you know i i think the idea here is um it, it's important to connect uh you know uh with the people that in a sense in a brief life uh, into your everyday existence, people who, who make you laugh, you know, people who inspire you, people who are there to, you know, be, be you know, uh, the shoulder to cry on, people who can, uh, you know, understand your frustrations and, and you know, be your buffer for stress uh, and, and, you know, all, all the usual support networks, you know. So I think the fact that we are stuck at home doesn't mean that we are cut off from this uh, support network. But again, uh, this doesn't happen by chance. Eh? So I would say my tip for you is, is to, in your mind, if you're not clear about the people that really give you that source of inspiration and motivation and, and social support, and then after this session, I mean, make a list, you know, who, who are the people, uh, you know, that, that are your source of joy and people that you enjoy hanging around with and, and the friends that, like I say, you know, I mean, give, give you that, that boost and friends that are the shoulder to cry on and, and make a list and and don't wait for them to contact you. You know, you should show the initiative to actually reach out to them and set a time, just like we set Zoom meetings, you know, with our office colleagues, you know, set a time so that, that you can hang out with them after work on weekends, you know, just as you would. I mean, the difference is that they're just not hanging out in the data rate shop together, you know, having, you know, a drink together, but, but we are doing it virtually, right? So that's my tip number two, stay connected to your social network so that you're not completely isolated. Now, I should make a, a, a comment here. I, I, it's interesting because, of course, 
you know, I think as psychologists, we, we, we recognize that different people, I think, take to this MCU in different ways. Um, you know, people who are introverted probably find this period a bit easier. So I, I'm an introvert, for example. So I mean, you know, I think for those of us who are introverts, I mean, you know, it, it's an adjustment, but, but, you know, being in isolation, doing things by yourself, you know, uh, that's probably not so much of a stretch because most of us, that's, that's sort of how we live life. You know, we are, we are comfortable with that isolation. Uh, but, but I do realize that people who are extra, more extroverted, uh, who are more used to being around people and, and, you know, they get their energy of life being around people. You know, I, I think this is quite a major adjustment to make. So again, for, for people who do feel lonely and, and do feel disconnected and isolated, then it, it's really up to you to stay connected to the people that, that uh, support you. And of course, you know, uh, you should also be supporting other friends as well. Okay, my third tip for how to manage stress during this MCO COVID is, is to learn to adapt your work styles. And, and here, I'm talking to many, many of my colleagues from 3KDU and Real who are tuning in. Uh, so a special, special shout out to them. I do realize again that all of us have different work styles. So once again, I think some people are quite used to, you know, working in isolation. They are quite happy working from home. You know, in, in fact, um, I was just remarking to a few of our colleagues yesterday that, that I think ironically, some of our colleagues are gonna have a greater adjustment, adjusting after the MCO ends, when they have to go back into the office. Because having to adjust then to get, you know getting up a bit earlier and dressing up and you know getting to your car and you know going through traffic jams again and and finding parking and then going to an office you know I mean I, I think some of us are going to actually miss uh, working at home you know uh, but I I do realize that again different strokes for different folks so there are going to be you know some staff that will struggle with working from home because they get their energy and their source of inspiration from other people. And so working in an office setting where they're surrounded by 20, 30, 40 other staff in a common work environment and, you know, uh, you know th that, that's, that's sort of, you know, how they get their impetus, how they get their motivation to actually go hour to hour, you know, how they, they survive until the end of the work day, they get their energy from others. So being at home is, is more difficult. But, but I think, look, it, it's not a bad exercise, you know, it's not a bad discipline, learning to work alone at home. Because I think the challenge then you've got to overcome is developing that self-discipline to really drive and push yourself. And I know that's not easy, but that's a really good skill to have. I mean, being a self-driven person, meaning that you're not waiting for the boss to sort of come and, you know, uh, tell you what to do, you know, or head of department or, or supervisor or a colleague, you know, being there every day, looking over your shoulder to say, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. You know, I, I think it's a good thing that that's not there when, you know, you're on lockdown. And the fact is you've got to get up alone and you've got to, in a sense, set your own agenda and have the discipline to then set targets for every hour or every, you know, morning, afternoon, every day, so that you know that you're not just being idle, you know. And, and I think developing that kind of discipline that's really uh you know a good skill to develop so i mean i think for everybody not just i think that the the young leaders in my organization you know some of my former students who are out there listening i i think if if you recall some of my lectures you know back when i was teaching psychology i i used to make the statement that you know one of the key features that any any leader ceo looks for in a prospective staff or looks for in a prospective leader. So when I'm thinking of somebody, you know, to promote, somebody to bring up in the organization, who should I give this responsibility to? You know, really one of the features I'm looking for is, is this person a self-starter? So is this person able to work at a certain speed in spite of the fact that there's nobody else to chase them? You know, nobody to sort of, you know, give them a bit of a kick, nobody to, to have to motivate them. And I think that that's great, you know? Being a self-motivated person, a self-starter, somebody that can organize work for myself, uh, you know. So in, in spite of the chaos, you know, in spite of, you know, being in isolation, I'm able to then very quickly determine what are my priorities, what do I need to do, 
you know, in order to meet my KPIs, my goals, my targets. And in some organizations where you may not even have KPIs and targets, then it's being self-organized enough to say, well, then how do I set my KPIs and targets? You know, so I think being that kind of a self-driven person, you know, to self-regulate, that's, I think, a wonderful skill to learn. And this MCO for this one month, is a, a, a great time to have to develop that skill, right? So I, I, I think that, that goes out to particularly, I think the younger staff in, in our organization that, that are beginning their careers, this is a great skill to learn, right? Now, I think I, I also wanna give a shout out to the bosses that are out there. So the head of departments, the leadership team members, you know, people who are supervising teams. So I think tip three also applies to you that in, in, in your case, you need to adapt to this isolation by, you know, by, by learning to let go, you know, and, and, and learning to stop micromanaging, learning to stop looking over the shoulder of all of your staff. I think it's a great thing that during this four months, we can't monitor staff minute to minute, hour to hour. I think that's a great thing because I'm, I've never been a fan of micromanagement. I mean, I'm, I'm more a person to, who set you goals or targets, right, you know, so, so there's a certain project, you know, we give you a particular deadline, certain parameters, we give you a budget, we give you a time frame to work under, and then, you know, you, you've got the whole day, you've got half the day, you've got six hours, one week, two weeks to then go out and work by yourself, and then come back to me and, and you know, show me what you've got, you know, whether it's a proposal, whether it's an idea, whether it's a program, you know, whether, whether it, it's, you know, KPIs that you're delivering. I'm, I'm a much greater fan of that. I mean, so I think those, those of you who've worked with me, even when we are all in the office together, I mean, I, I'm not the kind of person that sort of, you know, goes around and, and walks around every five, 10 minutes and checks on what everybody else is doing. Because I mean, honestly, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that, you know? So whether you're in your workstation, whether you're working in Starbucks, whether you're, you know, having lunch or tea or, or whatever it is you're doing, you know, I mean, to me, I mean, we're all adults, you know? I think as long as goals have been set, and everybody's clear about the sphere of responsibility and what you're supposed to be doing. You know, I, I'm never a fan of having to go and, and check on people all the time, you know. So I think it's a balance between there needs to be some accountability, of course. So at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, obviously, I mean, your bosses are still wanting to check on whether you're meeting targets, you know, and whether, you know, the time we are spending is being productive, right? So I, I think that's fair enough. I mean, all of us, including myself as CEO, we all have reporting structures and networks, and it's important that we are demonstrating to whether it's our board or whether it's it's our bosses, you know, that, that we're actually making progress in our work. But that's not the same as micromanaging, you know. Uh, being accountable, having clear goals, and in a sense then de uh, demonstrating to your bosses that you're making progress and you're achieving these goals is not the same as I need to be supervised every minute every hour, every day. So I think this MCO is really great, you know, because that's the kind of work culture that I want to create, you know. So for those of you who are my colleagues who are listening in from 3KDU and Real, I mean, I, I, I've not made this a secret that I'm a fan of that kind of culture of, of personal accountability, you know, that, that I don't think leaders and bosses need to actually check on you all the time. They shouldn't need to babysit you because they're not children anymore, you know. And, and I think... Uh, like I say, the MCO is a great time because we are all forced to stop micromanaging. You know, uh, so unless I don't know, I mean, unless the boss has put CCTVs in your house, which I hope they're not doing, you know, uh, I mean, they can't track you every day. And I think that's a great thing because uh, this is your opportunity for staff to show that you can work independently. And, and I think for leaders, this is an opportunity for us to show that we trust the staff to be able to accomplish projects and tasks by themselves without us having to check on them, like I say, every minute, every hour. So, you know, I think by all means, set goals, set deadlines, set clear KPIs, you know, uh, project schedules or whatever it is, GAN charts. But, but I think then as bosses, it's a good practice for us during this MCO period to then have to take a step back and to give room to our staff to actually work. And, and I'm a fan of that culture. I, I'm hoping that as an organization, Prestigion K12, which, you know, uh, is, is the the, the group that manages 3KDU and Rio, that that's going to be the work culture we create. So this one month, let's consider that the beginning of, of you know, uh, the transformation, right? That, that we stop micromanaging. It's about creating clear goals. It's about focusing on outcomes. 
So, so you know, uh, bosses being clear in communicating their outcomes for a particular project or task. And for staff, if you're not clear about the outcomes, then hey, it's your responsibility to ask the boss to clarify what the outcomes are and then shut off the Zoom session and go and work. You know, and, and like I say, take this one month as in a sense a gift uh, to, to demonstrate for all of us how independently we can work, how effective we can be, even when you know the boss isn't in the room. Right. So I, I think uh, that's what I mean by adapting work styles. And, and I think this is important in managing stress because, you know, if bosses are still going to try to micromanage, you're going to be incredibly stressed this four weeks. And, and it's stressing your staff out. It's stressing yourself out because you're going to attempt to do something that is not possible uh, during this MCO. All right. So I would say it's about letting go, but being clearer in our communication styles. Right. So that's number three. Adapt your work style so that staff are more independent and, and bosses uh, you know uh, shift to that outcome based uh, leadership that I talked about earlier. Okay, tip number four, how to manage stress and, and keep sane during this MCO. Uh, limit your news intake like, because I think that the, the, the temptation is that now that we're in front of our computers doing work almost seven, eight hours every day, you know, the temptation is, is, is to check news cycle. And of course, now the unfortunate thing is every news cycle, whether it's local news or the BBC or America or the whole wide world, I mean, whatever news channel you log into, the news is about the COVID crisis. And, and I'm, I mean, understandably so. You know, so, so I'm sure many of you, for example, have got that website where you're checking, right? How many, what is the count? You know, how many new cases, how many deaths around the world, how many cases in Malaysia? And, and I think, look, that's very natural, you know? That, that we are wanting to keep, in a sense, connected to what's happening in our world, in our community, and that's important. So I'm not saying shut off the news completely. You know, it's important to keep track of what's going on. You know, I mean, has the Prime Minister made the latest announcement? Is there a new government stimulus plan? You know, are there new regulations? Is there a new a, a red zone, orange zone? You know, are there new rules about what we can and cannot do? So I think, look, I, I think it's important during a crisis like this to keep in connection with the world around us. But look, you don't need to spend seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day during that. And, and I think that the, the, the danger is that when you're reading about the COVID crisis for hours and hours and hours and hours without any break every day, it does become depressing. You know, I mean, it does create a, a more stressful kind of, of vibe and a context because then you're reading this negative news, negative news and, and all of the bad news now. Again, I, I think it's a balance. And so I want to make very clear, I'm not talking about hiding from the truth. I'm not talking about completely sheltering ourselves so that we are cut off from the real world, you know, because that, that's not what we want to do. But I think it's about having a balance. So that's why I, I say limit the news intake. You know, it's not about completely, you know, uh, you know, shutting down the news intake so that you're cut off from the world, all right? Uh, so, so limit the news intake uh, and, and each of you, look, I mean, you know yourselves. I think each of you know your point where, you know, you need to really shut off the news and you need to go and, you know, sort of do something else, you know. So whether it's, it's watching a movie or a video that has to do nothing to do with the COVID crisis, you know, you need to, I think, switch off. And I think that that's important, all right? If not, you're, you're going to, you know, very quickly, I think, be caught in a spiral where you're, you're just surrounded by crisis and and i think the weight and the burden of what's happening around the world i mean that, that's a heavy burden to bear and that that's not something that i think you want to bear yourself all right so limit your news intake you need to know when to shut off and and and, and start reading or, or doing other things that are not covid virus related right um and this leads me to my next point which is you know, you need to maintain some personal space amidst the crisis. Uh, so I, I know it's difficult. Now. So look, I, I acknowledge that each of you have different, you know, living arrangements. So some of you really are living by yourself. So you're in full isolation, alone in your apartment and your house. All right. So maybe that the issue of personal time is not such an issue to you. But I also realize that there are a lot of other people that are actually living, um, you know, uh, with families. So some of you are married, you've got your children there, you've got your husband and wife there, 
uh, others of you are living with flatmates, you know, friends, uh, colleagues. So you're, you're sort of, in a sense, stuck with the same four, five, six people for the next one month. And I know, you know, to some extent, sometimes, it, you know, it, it really can raise your stress level. So I think being with family is a great thing. But on the other hand, if you're not careful and you're with, you know, people all the time so that there is no break in your schedule where you're spending some time alone, where you've got some private time, uh, that's not a good thing as well. So that's what I mean when I say maintain some personal space, some personal time. I know that can be difficult, especially look if, you know, you and your husband and, and wife uh, with your children are living in a studio apartment. That's really difficult to do. But, but as far as possible, it's about creating some time and some space where you're by yourself, right? So, of course, if, you, if you've got a few rooms, it's about then saying, okay, look, everybody from 7 to 8 p.m. or from 9 to 10 p.m., I think, though, for those of us who are parents, it's about waiting until our kids are asleep. You know? So, I think when the kids are asleep, that, that's when... As a parent, we can then take a deep breath and have one hour to, you know, do things that, that you want to do, you know. But it's also taking a break from work. So, so I was going to make that comment that one of the other dangers about working from home is that then sometimes there are no parameters, there are no boundaries. Huh? Because then you're working from home and then you're working all the time. So it's really important that all of us also set certain parameters where, uh, again, I mean, it, it's up to you. Some of you are more used to working 9 to 5, and then at 5 p.m., you say goodbye to work, you turn off your Zoom sessions and go uh, uh, go along with your private life. So, I mean, it's really good if you can turn off and on that way. I know some of you, it, it's more difficult to have boundaries because you're the kind of people that are more flexible and you're still working at night, you know, that kind of thing. So, I think for those of you who are more fluid, it's really important for you to set aside a few hours every day where you can really turn off work and where you can spend time by yourself doing doing things that that you know in a sense you enjoy but just taking a breath you know having time to reflect having time to be silent to be quiet you know i i talk a lot about in my stress management workshops about personal reflection and the importance of solitude the importance of having quiet in your life i mean i think i'll go crazy if i don't have quite in my life now. I mean, in my normal work day before MCO, uh, traveling to and from work, that was sort of my quiet time. So that's why I I never used to be bothered by being stuck in traffic jams. In fact, I, I used to love traffic jams because that's my solitude time. That's the time where I'm alone in my car and I don't need to talk to anybody. I don't need to be with anybody. I don't need to you know, answer calls or whatever it is. And, and that's my time then to de-stress. You know, decompress to, to to then relax. So whether you're doing mindfulness exercises or doing meditation or or just reading by yourself or just giving yourself silence to think about your day and think about what you need to do next, uh, that 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 space, that personal time is really important, right? Okay, so that's my tip number five for all of you. You need to have the discipline to maintain some personal time. And like I say, I know it's more difficult for some of you because Maybe you're in a really crowded apartment or crowded house. So, you know, I, I know it's difficult. Maybe, hey, just, you know, put on your annoying noise cancelling headsets and, and just, you know, uh, listen to music for a few hours. But but find some way where each of you can have your space. And, and if you're, I guess, with a family or, you know, with your family or with friends, maybe it's good to then schedule time that all of you can have personal space for half an hour or one hour every day, right? Okay, my next tip. Number six, indulge in what I call uh, resource activities. Okay, so these activities that that are source of energy, inspiration. They help you distress. They help you, in a sense, maybe release some of the emotions you've got pent up, whether it's anger or frustration or stress or anything like that. So, so um, I mean, those of you who have done my stress management talks will know that I talk about four types of resource activities. And I think in this COVID MCO, this, these four activities are particularly important. So let me go through them one by one. And you can think yourself about what are the four resource activities that you want to sort of pick yourself. Okay. So uh, number one, I call them release activities. So these, these activities almost give you a physical release. All right. Uh, 
I, I recall that, <laughs> you know, when I was still studying psychology, uh, there, was, there was a professor who, you know, sort of, you know, got us uh, to drive out, you know, this was in the New Zealand countryside and, you know, we go to some deserted valley somewhere and we should sort of just scream into the valley and, and that's sort of therapeutic, you know, just shouting and screaming. Uh, I want to point out not at anybody, uh, so you're not shouting at, you know, your, your family members or your children or, or, or your friends or your colleagues. But it was just the physical activity of releasing a scream or a shout, you know, and it's not meant to be destructive. It's not, you know, shouting at someone, but it's just shouting to release that energy. And, and I know, I mean, when you're in lockdown, I mean, it's not possible to sort of go hiking and do this in a mountainside somewhere. But, but it may be, you know, useful to sort of maybe shout and scream into a pillow, for example. You know, I, I think that that's something that you can do indoors but almost any kind of physical activity. Now, I know in an MCO, it's, it's a bit more difficult because I can't ask you to go jogging or cycling or go swimming because that may not be possible in an MCO. But, but you know, I mean, there may be things you can do in the house that, that help release that physical activity. So I know many of you have been, you know, showing your exercise videos or doing push-ups, you know, strengthening your core, you know, lift, lifting weights. I mean, there was a guy, I think, in Europe somewhere that, ran a whole marathon from the, you know, from the balcony of the apartment. So I guess, hey, look, almost anything is possible. But release activities is about, I think, a physical release. So doing something that allows a physical release of energy to let out, you know, it's a sort of an outlet uh, to some of the stress and, and, and the anger. Number two, I call them enjoyment activities. So these are things that you do just for fun, right? You know, and, and, uh, um, you know, these are things that, you know, look, I, I always say uh, every day it's important to have one thing to look forward to at the end of the day. And I think that applies whether it's MCO or whether it's just normal day-to-day -day life. It's important that every 24 hours at the end, particularly of maybe a work day, you've got something waiting for you that you can look forward to. And, and so this is where I think my advice is to give yourself a treat, you know, and each of you will have different interests, different things that you really enjoy. So this is about being honest with yourself and asking yourself, what is something that really is an indulgence, something that I really take joy and pleasure out of? So it could be anything. Uh, and again, different strokes for different folks. And some of you, it may be reading a book, it could be listening to music, it could be watching movies. I know Netflix is sort of snowed under now, you know, millions of people watching movies online. It could be being with your family members, playing board games, uh, you know, catching up with friends, uh, you know, sleeping, eating, you know, I mean, a lot of different things. So I know maybe your, your menu of what you can do is a little bit more limited now that you're restricted at home. But look, having said that, look, I guarantee you there are heaps of stuff you can still do in your house that gives you a real sense of enjoyment and pleasure. All right. So it's just about uh, later on, I mean, just sitting down and quietly asking and reflecting to yourself, you know, I mean, what what do you want to do? You know, I mean, so what what do you want uh, to do that gives you a real sense of pleasure? And I think, look, I mean, in my stress management talks, I talk a lot about the fact that sometimes the temptation is just to to sort of copy what other people are doing you know so some of our own r and r unfortunately don't really give us a sense of enjoyment we do it because everybody else is doing you know so i mean everybody else likes watching movies so i, I want to watch you know uh, everybody else enjoys sports so i, I enjoy sports you know everybody else want to read this book so I, I i read this book because you know everybody seems to say it's a great book but but look, I, I think this is about asking ourselves. This is about being honest with ourselves about what do I actually enjoy? And it may not be the same thing as my friends or my colleagues, and that's fine, you know? It's not about copying anybody else. This is not a competition. This is about, you know, asking yourself and being true to yourself in terms of what gives you real joy and pleasure. And I think this is where, I know ironically, we are on Facebook now. This is where you, you've got to avoid the trap of copying other people on Facebook. You know, so sometimes, you know, we, we say we are living secondhand lives because, you know, rather than ask ourselves what gives us real happiness and joy, we are too busy sort of, you know, keeping up with what everybody else is doing. And, and I think it's okay to sort of maybe get inspiration from others. Nothing wrong with that. It's okay to, you know, look around and, and you know, just sample, I guess, and get a sense of what others are doing. But 
that's different from from following you know that's different from feeling the pressure and the stress of having to keep up with other people so so don't do that you know i mean don't add to your stress this is about being true to yourself and and just you know picking something that you enjoy yourself right Number three, the third kind of resource activity are what we call control activity. So, so for example, some people, you know, when they are stressed, you know, uh, it, it sounds funny, but what they do is they actually do housework. They actually clean up, you know. So some people will wash the dishes. Some people will clean up their room. So I know a lot of people during this MCO have sort of done spring cleaning, which is a great thing. They do some gardening, you know, they go they to the aquarium, you know. But, but something, you know, some chore. Some some housework, you know, and usually it's got to do with organizing or cleaning, you know. So very, uh, you know, uh, Maria, you know, what what's you know, the name of that, you know, Japanese uh, lady who cleans up everybody, right? I think condo, right? You know, so so it's a bit like that. But I want to explain the psychology behind it and why some people take pleasure from you know doing basic simple chores or housework. It's about control. Earlier on, I talked about the fact that during a crisis like this, when so many things are beyond our control, right? The economy, the recession, the COVID crisis, the lockdown, you know, a lot of these things we have no uh, power over. And, and sometimes that's the source of the stress. We, we feel that there's nothing, therefore, in my life that is within my influence and control. And so to readdress that balance, sometimes we need to find things to control. And, and this is a perfectly natural impulse, uh, but it's important that therefore you channel this impulse to find control in your life to healthy things. Right? So let me start with maybe giving you some unhealthy examples of the manifestation for this need for control. So, for example, controlling other people's lives, that's a really bad example of, of how to manifest this. So sometimes we, we don't, you know, we're not conscious of this, but we're doing this. So we're family members, we drive, you know, our children nuts, you know, we drive our, you know, husband and wife up the wall because we're trying to control every single thing. We're trying to micromanage everything. We may not realize we're doing this, but that's the manifestation of that because I can't control my boss in the office, I can't control the world, I can't control the COVID crisis, so I can't try to control my family, you know. Uh, and, and by the way, some of us as bosses, this is what we do as well with our staff, right? You know, so when we over control, over micromanage, you know, that's sometimes a manifestation of trying to get control in our lives. So, so I want to start by saying controlling other people's lives is a really bad example of this because, you know, you may be, you know, de-stressing yourself by doing this, but you're creating a lot of stress in, in other people's lives. So, so I think, you know, healthy manifestations that don't, you know, disturb other people are, are things like gardening, and cooking, you know, so that's fine. I mean, you want to have the kitchen to yourself and be a bit like master chef and become really anal and controlling about what ingredients you want to put in. Perfectly fine. You know, everybody leaves the kitchen. You become the master chef. You control everything you want to do. Great. You know, I, I enjoy cooking myself. So that's one of my control stress activities. Other people, they do gardening. Other people, they do housework. They control, you know, I mean, they, they reorganize their whole library, their room by all means do that you know so all of those i would say are healthy and non destructive manifestations for this need control okay but but perfectly healthy to do that just like i say don't don't go disturb other people's lives and i think number 4 the fourth kind of resource activity that that is a is a good outlet uh, for your stress uh, for the emotions that you're feeling are what we call creative activity. So I think most of us know this, you know, whether it's singing or writing or playing an instrument. And again, the good news is a lot of these things you can do from the comfort of your home. All right. So I think during a lockdown period, perfectly fine. You know, I mean, you can draw, you can paint, you can whatever you can find in your house. You know, uh, I mean, you know, some of you haven't tried some of these activities. So maybe you could try something new, you know, try writing a story, try writing poetry, try writing a song, you know. Uh, so I mean, uh, you know, we, we, we all joke that the best songs in the world are probably written out of stress. You know, the best paintings in the world are written out of by the artist's need to express some deep emotion. So whether that's joy or sadness or love, you know. So, so I think, you know, creative outlets, creative channels are, are really powerful 
if if you've got you know emotion that that you need you know to, to sort of channel and express right so i just want to uh end uh you know my tip number six indulging in resource activities by saying these four activities don't come by accident so once again it takes a certain level of discipline to set aside time to actually do these four things and look i mean you don't need to do all of the four things every day you know, I, I think you can mix it up a, a, a bit. You know, I mean, you could have a release activity on Monday, a, a control activity on Tuesday. For those of you who are more spontaneous, just say whatever you feel like every day. But, but you know, these four activities, I, I think, are really healthy. And you should do them, at least one of them, once every day, all right, to de-stress and, and as a healthy outlet. Okay, my tip number seven is to keep physically fit. Now, I know this is not so much psychological as it is physical but look healthy body healthy mind right so the body is linked to the mind uh, one of the things that contributes to its stress sometimes is the fact that we are not keeping physically fit now i know it's more challenging during the mco because you can't go out jogging or cycling or go to the gym you know so you're more restricted but look you know i i think we know how to do this there are creative ways of doing this at home you know uh thousands millions of videos on youtube that help you keep fit during a lockdown so if you need inspiration or ideas i think you can just go log on to one of those videos type in how to keep fit during the COVID crisis and you know no shortage of 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 i, I think exercise regimes but it's not just exercise it's about diet as well it's about getting enough rest you know um you know posture drinking enough water right so keeping hydrated, you know, so all of the basic things that, to be honest, we teach our 10-year-old kids to do. Simple things, they're not complex, but it's again just having the discipline every day, you know, to keep some of these, uh, you know, health and fitness routines so that, you know, we don't let ourselves go during this one-month period. And, you know, the fact that, you know, we are, we are isolated, uh, we don't let our fitness levels drop. So I know it's difficult to do when you're alone, but this is important especially if you want to manage your stress levels like i say the fitter you are and the more physically healthy you are you will find that it actually has a, a, a noticeable impact on your moods but also your energy levels your ability to do work you know i find that when i'm unfit you know when when i'm not well i mean the ability to do work i mean is, is significantly impacted it's, you know I, I feel it straight away you know so my my stamina level is my ability to to you know uh, pay attention during meetings to contribute creative ideas to come up with ideas myself you know all of these things you know are impaired when i'm not fit right so my tip number seven during this mco is keep fit right and last but not least so i want to end um you know my my eight tips for how to manage stress and um you know keep psychologically healthy during this mco time is to really savor the unique opportunities. I know, I mean, this sounds very cliche. You know, we talk about, you know, count your blessings, right? You know, look at the bright side, you know, I mean, uh, in spite of a lot of, of difficulties and challenges that we are experiencing, you know, this uh, one month, and I know it's, it's not easy. You know, I mean, working from home, having to look after our children, you know, being restricted in this way. I mean, it, it is really difficult, you know, and, and so I don't want to, underplay that i don't want to you know uh you know in a sense uh downsize or un, you know underestimate the challenges that all of you are experiencing in your own individual settings uh, but i think you know one thing we learn in life even in the most difficult and trying circumstances there are always unique opportunities and blessings that we can find in our lives uh, if we really look and and so you know uh, i mean when we talk to friends and and when i listen to their own sharing and reflection during this crisis you know many of them talk about the fact that yeah it's, it's difficult you know uh, and there are a lot of things they miss they miss going out they miss shopping they miss being around friends you know they miss being in their social circles you know fellowshipping with other people uh, so there are 101 things that they miss being in this mco but at the same time, there are things that this MCO have given us opportunities to do that we otherwise would not have, I think, spotted or seen or appreciated. 
So for example, for those of us with families that are with our husband and wives and children, I mean, you know, I, I was just telling our colleagues earlier this week to say, look, I mean, savor this, you know, enjoy every minute, second you're having with your children because you will never spend as much time as your children this one month as you will ever, ever again, you know? And, and I know that itself can be stressful, you know, looking after young kids, uh, you know, uh, they themselves get bored, they themselves need, you know, inspiration and, and, and attention and motivation. So I know it's not easy, but I mean, you know, look, I, I you know, kids grow up so fast. Uh, one of the things I say a lot in my parenting workshops is, you know, the heart of parenting is, is learning to enjoy being with our children. You know, and, and I think this MCO really, in a sense, forces us to develop that, you know, to, to, to find things that we enjoy doing together. So whether it's playing board games, whether it's watching movies together, laughing together, talking together, sharing together, playing music together, eating together, you know, uh, I, I certainly appreciate these times, you know, uh, that we have because you know, I mean, before you know it, your kids are going to be 18, 19, 20. They're going to be out in university. They're going to be working. They're going to be married. They're going to be out of the house, you know, and then you've got emptiness syndrome and, and you miss every moment. So this one month, I know it, it. it's funny to say that now, but this one month will be something that I think we are going to be looking back to. And we realize that this time is special, not easy, but but it's special. It's a unique time. So whether it's spending time with your husband or wife or with your children or relatives or friends, you know, savor this. I know, you know, after, you know, many, many hours being trapped in the same place together, you know, you drive each other up the wall. I understand that, you know, the ebbs and flows. That's why you need your personal time as well. But at the same time, really learn to enjoy being with people uh, that, that, that you're, you're with in the home, uh, people that you love. But it's not just people, you know, I think it's other opportunities as well. I've talked to some friends that say, well, you know, they've never had so much time to read, do online courses. Some of my colleagues have signed up for online programs because now the whole wide world is offering everything free. Yeah? All of the universities, you know, all of the online programs, everybody is opening up their source material. You know, uh, some of my friends, you know, they're listening to more music, you know, uh, I, I, there are loads of free stuff now, uh, you know. Broadway plays, you can watch musicals, you can watch plays, you can watch, I mean, you know, you can sit down and watch a whole Shakespeare play for free now for three, four hours from the comfort of your house. You know, you can be sitting in your bed in your sarong and watch everything, you know. So so I know, you know, uh, it, it's not the same as being out there. But like I say, you know, many of these things we wouldn't do in a normal day, if we are honest. Many of these things, you know, uh, reading books, you know, sort of reducing what we call our tower of shame, uh, you know, that that pile of books that you bought over the last two, three years that, you know, let's be honest, you haven't finished reading, whether it's novels. And look, I'm talking about non-work related stuff. Right? So to my colleagues in Sri KDU and Real, I'm not asking you to just read work related stuff. It's about reading, hey, reading fiction, you know, reading stuff that you enjoy reading. So if you scour your house, I'm sure there are going to be books that you have bought you know, months and years ago that you haven't had time to read because we are just too busy running around. And now that we are sort of trapped in our houses, this is the time to do it, you know. So reducing that tower of shame by reading, but also, you know, developing new hobbies and interests, right? And, and uh, ironically, like I say, I, I've got friends and staff of mine who during this COVID crisis, they've started interest groups, they've started, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, Sherlock Holmes, you know, clubs, <laughs> sewing clubs, you know, Korean drama clubs, you know, and, and, and all this kind of stuff that they never had time doing in our normal day. But during this MCO, suddenly we realize we've got a bit more time. And, and so I think, you know, that, that's my last tip. That look, This lockdown is not going to last forever, thankfully. We're going to be able to get back to our normal lives at some point. But, um, you know, I, I, I think that that's, that's, you know, my, my ending tip for you, I, I've got a quote. Let me hold this up so that you can see the full quote. You know, this is by uh, an author called Elizabeth Earl. All right. So let me hold this up a little bit. There you go. And uh, I think this is a beautiful quote, you know. Uh, she says, make the most of today because time waits for no one. 
Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present, you know. Many of my younger students thought this came from Kung Fu Panda, but that's not true, eh, right? So I think Kung Fu Panda stole it from Alice Earl, right? So this is an Alice Earl coach who was a teacher and educator. And I think what she says is, is really true, you know. Uh, I, I know it's a difficult time for all of us. Like I said at the beginning, you know, it's not just about the lockdown and being restricted in our movement, but it's also about the uncertainty that we are facing, you know in our work, in, in the economy, in the recession, you know, when will the lockdown end? How long will it go for? So amidst, I think, a, a challenging, uncertain period, amidst a VUCA world, I think what Alice Earl is saying really holds true. You know, I mean, there's so much truth in that. That look, what I should really be doing is, is savoring the fact that, you know, today I woke up and I'm alive. And I'm with loved ones and, and you know, I, I may not be able to do everything that I want to do, you know, in a sense, even without the MCO, I mean, none of us can, you know, do everything we want to do, but I really should be focusing on what I can do. And there are so many things that I've got the freedom to do in spite of the MCO, you know, uh, so many things that I can savor, you know, I, 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 the fact that I can still connect with all of you, you know, I mean, uh, and, and have a, a, a session like this where I'm able to share ideas with you and able to interact with all of you. I mean, that that's wonderful to me. You know, that, that's my stress relief. I, I love teaching, you know, and, and I know many of my teachers, you know, over this period, I mean, it's been really hard work for them to do e-learning. You know, my school teachers, real schools, three KDU schools, I mean, they, they've had to work doubly hard to set up, you know, their Zoom sessions, their Google Hangouts, you know, uh, doing a lot of e-learning with their students. I know that's hard work, but at the same time, you know, I've been hearing from many of them that they really enjoy it because they have missed their students. You know, they enjoy being in touch with their students. And, and so that's something to savor, you know, uh, just every day, you know, having the opportunity to have an impact on, on a student's life, having the opportunity to share an idea, having an opportunity to inspire a young student who, her herself himself is going through a stressful time. You know, I mean, the children themselves are, are, you know, having difficulty adjusting to this MCO. So for teachers to have the opportunity through technology to reach out to the students and not just teach them, but, but to occupy their minds with something, keep them focused on something, you know, uh, help give them something productive to do with their day and, and comfort them, inspire them. I mean, just, you know, for the teacher to say, I'm still here. You know, and, and to give some normality to a, a very difficult and unusual time. I think all of these are blessings, right? So I, I want to end with that to say uh, during this, this potentially stressful period and uncertain period, it's about being able to count our blessings, being able to recognize the many things that we still have, you know, in our lives that we are thankful for. Uh, and I think that's, that's really important, right? So. Um, I want to thank all of you for taking time to join me this one hour. I hope some of these ideas have been useful uh, to, to, to some of you. All right. Uh, and uh, look, I, I just want to wish you all the best. Please, most importantly, keep safe, you know, uh, during this period, uh, you know. Uh, now, I'm just going to check, all right, whether... Uh, uh, whether uh <laughs> whether there are any questions so i'm just scrolling down to see whether anybody is uh are still following this all right again i'm sorry for starting a bit late i think my internet was overloaded so i i you know i, I just start a bit late but let me just scroll down to see whether there are any questions so if you have questions all right you know uh let me see whether i can answer i, I don't think i can answer all of them um right so isaac you had a question on you know what if there are too many work decisions that you can't control and undo it well look i i i hear you brother i i think many of us have been in situations like that i mean and look i just want to comfort you there are good days and bad days and and, and there are going to be days even in this mco where we are just overwhelmed with work and there are going to be days where you wake up and every 
free have to do from 6 a.m to midnight and it's just have to do because you know it, it may be a crisis it may be a, a crunch time in your workplace uh so i think the only comfort i have isaac is to say that hopefully not every day is like that but i mean once in a while everybody including myself we encounter days like that where you know on the ledger there are more things we can't control and there are fewer things we can control and and i i think the comfort is that there are other days where there are more things we can control and and it's not always going to be you know a bad day so i think you've got good days and bad days and we just got to roll with the punches and learn to adapt that way all right um marcus how important how important is it to have bike to drive you i i think that's incredibly important marcus you know so um you know your mission and your purpose in life i mean that's not something that i talked a lot about but i i think um you know in stress management we we talk sometimes about having reflection time so earlier i talked about setting aside some time to think about your life and reflect on your life and and some of you have attended our workshops of mine where we talked about personal reflection you know setting aside you know one or two days every six months of your life to really ask that question you know the, the question marcus is reminding us of which is the why what is my purpose in life what do i really want to achieve in my life so look i i i you know i didn't think about that but now that you cue me on to that i think this mco period you know 30 days of being locked down this is the great time for some of you who haven't done personal reflection in your life for months or for years or maybe forever it's really great maybe set aside one day you know where you're away from zoom and your office i mean you could choose a weekend like a saturday or sunday where you're away and and you're just by yourself maybe you know in a room somewhere in your house and it's just about having alone time to ask yourself these questions you know so what do i want for my life what are my life goals what will bring me happiness and satisfaction to my life at the end of my life when i come to the end of it what do i want to have accomplished in my life and then of course i mean you can do exercises like what is my five year plan what is my 10 year plan you know what, what do i want to do to achieve this mission and this purpose but i think it's really important to ask yourself what we call existential questions like that you know i mean what what will bring me meaning uh you know what will bring me happiness and satisfaction in my life and of course all of us will have slightly different answers to that question but it's important to ask you know that question i mean look i i, I don't think i would be alive or sane if I, I didn't start this practice which one of my professors taught me to do you know when i was in university so this is like hey 27 28 years ago i started doing personal reflection you know once a year and then i realized i needed it actually twice a year so every six months you know i, I set aside time to to ask these questions so what do i want in my life and keeping centered so that what i'm doing uh today you know is oriented and aligned with my own life goal and my own life vision All right so asking the question where am i am i pointed in the right direction am i heading in the direction that i'm comfortable with that is aligned what i think is my purpose and my mission in life i think that's incredibly important so having a mission and a why for your life uh, helps you you know manage stress right you know uh again i'm sorry i, I can't answer all of the, the questions there are heaps of them um yeah 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. great okay let me see whether there are any questions uh, any recommendations to encourage senior citizens to uh, limit their news consumption? So this is a, a question compared. Look, I, I don't think it's just senior citizens. I think this is all of us, you know. So I think it's, like I said earlier, just about having discipline. So if we don't have discipline, then sometimes we need to set boundaries to say maybe one hour day of news and that's it. Beyond one hour, I'm not going to check the news. I'm going to go do something else and watch movies on Netflix, right? So I think it's about setting your own parameters and, and boundaries, right? All right, da, 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 da. let's go through. Mm -hmm. There's no time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good comments, guys. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of the things you're sharing are wonderful. I mean, all of you should take time to read what some of the other participants are writing. Some really good ideas and comments here. 
trying to master master chef yeah i mean look learn a new skill man you know i mean so again based on what you know you have ingredients you have in your house so whether it's cooking whether it, it's learning a new skill learning i mean i've got friends who are learning whole new languages man i i think i've got a friend who by the end of one month probably can speak spanish you know uh, from scratch because i mean they are stuck in their house doing nothing else so i i think like i say savor the opportunities this brings you will never ever have so much time whether to learn languages learn skills learn dances you know anything you can do from the confines of your house i would say now is the time to do it and maybe for street kdu and real stuff you know learn something and you can share it on your own whatsapp networks and sort of inspire one another right challenge each other um da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just checking whether there are any other questions. So feel free to share. I'm still happy to be online for a few more minutes. Um, yeah, exactly. So Johan, I think that's a really good point about having perspective. So Johan's uh, comment reads, I believe that all perspectives can turn out to be positive depending on how we look at them. Absolutely right. By the way, Johan is our principal for Sri KDU uh, National Primary. So give a shout out to Johan. I think that's a really good point. I mean, um, you know, uh, one of the exercises that I do for stress management is I, you know, we, we, we get people to, you know, see pictures of nature, you know. So of course, in the lockdown, you can't go for a hike or go to the sea. But but I remember, so let me share a story. I mean, I remember when I first came back from New Zealand. So this was 98 99 and i was just starting off first time working in a malaysian work culture in an asian work culture you know and and i remember i was lecturing uh you know uh and and it was tough man i mean the first few months i was really stressed because at that time we were sort of doing 15 20 you know i remember up to 21 22 hours of lecturing every week and I just come back just in time. So I didn't have time to prepare for any of my lectures. So literally I was, you know, I would be preparing until 4 a.m. at night for an 8 a.m. lecture, you know, and I was doing this like sort of every day because I was teaching four or five classes at that time. And and man, that was, those were the good old days, man, you know, and, and, and having to mark hundreds of assignments, you know. So teachers who are watching this, look, I, I certainly understand your pain because I used to be doing all of that stuff. And every day, just preparing and, and I was stressed out of my mind. Uh, and I remember that one of the things I used to do to sort of de-stress was I used to go to bookshops. Okay, this is very old fashioned, all right? You know, now with the computers, you know, that's different. But I, 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 we, we didn't have laptops of our own, sorry, I mean, you know? So I used to go to bookshops and I would go to the travel section. And in those, you know, those days, you had the, these large picture books of, beautiful places around the world so i would pick up a book you know in this bookshop and it would be like you know the most beautiful villages in provence france you know or the most beautiful rainforest or the most beautiful tropical island resorts and i would, you know open up these books the mountains you know valleys you know uh fantastic you know new zealand canada all over the world malaysia and you would see these pictures of these beautiful places and I remember that that would really, you know, help me distress because, you know, for that moment, it reminded me that the world is a lot bigger than my office. You know, it reminded me that, that you know, that that this huge world outside my workplace, outside my office, outside my home. And, and you know, what seeing these pictures of nature, right, you know, so we say, nature gives you a sense of scale and perspective so i'm going back to johan's point about perspective nature gives you perspective because then you realize your life is so much bigger than whatever problem you're facing at that moment you know and and your world is so much bigger than that one problem than your office and, and so i want to encourage all of my colleagues here look you know work is important but look work is not the most important thing in your life and, and this is your CEO telling you this, uh, you know, I mean, look, don't, don't die working, man, you know. Work is not the most important thing in your life. I mean, I believe in being wholehearted in work. I mean, I love my work. I, I'm 100%. When I'm doing work, my heart and my mind is there. But look, work is not the whole of your life, you know. And, and so whether you're having a work-related stress or a relationship-related stress or financial-related stress, I, I think going to nature, 
And so now, of course, you don't need to go to bookshops like I used to do. You know, now you just open up your, your phones or your, 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 your computer, you go to Google Map. You know, I, I love doing that still. I, I go to Google Map and you can visit anywhere in the world. Street Finder, I mean, you could stand in, you know, in the foot of Marco Picchu, you know, you could go to the Everest Base Camp right now. You know, their, their, their Google, you know, Street Finder helps you actually see perspectives from wherever. I can go back to New Zealand, go back to Queenstown, go back to my old home in Dunedin, you know, uh, where I was studying and, and, you know, for a moment, forget I'm, I'm here in my, trapped in my home, you know. Uh, so whether it's islands or mountains, uh, but going back to nature, going back and, and changing, in a sense, your physical point of view, sometimes reminds you to change perspective. But look, I mean, another example of changing perspective is, you know, I'm reminded of that famous quote by a mountain climber that says, you know, I mean, when you see a mountain, you see a barrier. When I see a mountain, I see an opportunity to challenge myself. And I think, again, it's easier said than done. But these are examples of, of perspective changing, you know, uh, questions or, or quotes, you know. So rather than seeing this period as, oh, you know, it's more work for me, you know, I've got to do this and that and all of the whole list of all of these nuisance factors that just add to my stress level. Like I said earlier, it's about changing perspective and saying, hey, look, this is a challenge for me, you know. And Chileong, this is a challenge of my discipline. It's a challenge of my leadership. It's a challenge of, of you know, my health. It's a challenge of my endurance. And, and, you know, look, will I take up the challenge? So this is about me talking to myself, you know. Am I ready to take up this challenge? This is an opportunity for me to learn about myself, but also for me to stretch myself as a leader as a worker, as a husband, as a father, right? To become a better father, a better husband, a better leader, a better CEO, a better staff, a better teacher, you know? So, so I think these are all good perspective taking questions, you know, and the fact that, you know, it's about how we look at life, you know, and, and that's really important. So I thank, thanks so much, Johan, for reminding us of that, right? Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling down, you know? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So good. Look, I, I, so I, I think I'm going to come to a close now. All right. I, I thank you all for your attention, for taking time to come and join me, for sharing ideas, sharing questions. Uh, and again, I, I just want to end by, by uh, encouraging everybody here, you know, especially my colleagues from 3KDU and Rail. I, I want to say, look, I, I know it's not an easy time, you know, and, and I don't want to make light of the fact that, you know, this two weeks has been really challenging. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, as an organization, you know, I've seen so many of you having to be agile, to adapt, to be fluid, to be flexible, to a very fast changing environment. I mean, we were all given 24 hours notice to get ready for the MCO. Uh, and, you know, the teachers, like I said earlier, I mean, you're an inspiration. I mean, just all the hard work you've done to prepare for online lessons. And many of our teachers had no idea how to use online tools like Google Classroom or, or Class Dojo or, or Google Hangouts. And, and I'm inspired by you know, how much work they've put in learning to use these tools because I mean, they're so incredibly dedicated to their students. You know? and, and, and all the extra work and effort to really help you know, their students you know, to continue to learn, uh, continue to prepare for their studies, exams, and all of that through a, a lockdown period so i want to give a shout out to the teachers because i mean you're really you've really been heroes these few weeks and and i've received a lot of uh you know a lot of praise from parents a lot of really complimentary things that parents are saying about you and many parents whatsapping me to say please thank your teachers so i want to do that publicly now to say look, thank you so much for for putting in the hard work because we know you've had to do that plus look after your own children and you know sort of you know, uh, be at home. Uh, and so, you know, thank you so much, you know. But also, look, you know, many of our administrative staff, you know, I'm inspired by your ability to be flexible, you know, to keep the organization still running, you know, the finance team, the human resource team, the, the marketing team. I mean, you're still doing marketing throughout this whole period, you know, digital marketing coming up with ideas like virtual open days, you know, uh, our operations team, our registry team, government liaison, uh, purchasing, you know, look, all of the different departments. And of course, the IT department, because you've cut, kept all of this connected. 
and and you know i i don't want to miss anybody out but the whole admin task force and work team i mean they've had an incredibly challenging time this two weeks having to work from home being very very resourceful and creative to keep everything afloat and i just want to say to all of you guys i mean you know i really appreciate your effort and i know it's not been easy at all you know uh for many of you like i say it's been actually extra work uh, to keep things afloat so for example you know this last week you know the hr and the finance team worked working very hard to make sure payroll goes out and everything is done by remote so i i think look i i i'm really encouraged by everybody's effort and energy to be agile you know and and to adapt in in a very difficult and trying environment and uh and and you know i think that really bodes well i mean as your ceo i'm very encouraged because i think it shows that as an organization, we can adapt to change. And uh, you know, one of our goals is to become a more agile organization in the VUCA world, to be faster, to be able to move quickly, you know. And I think what this two weeks has, has shown me is that, you know, we, we, we are an agile, adaptive organization. And, and so I'm really, uh, you know, uh, really encouraged uh, and really blessed to be your colleague, you know, and, and uh, so, I want to just end by by saying that and for the rest of you from the public who have joined us for this uh, short session some of my former students friends family members uh, thank you so much for dropping by like i say please do you know uh, keep safe everybody amidst this remember the most important thing is keep your health and the health of your family uh, not just your physical health but your mental health as well so look god bless everybody you know, and and uh, please keep working together, keep supporting one another. All right. Thank you so much. And um, just a, a quick shout out. We're having another uh, a session like this virtual session on Thursday. I think that's two to three p.m. And uh, that's uh, you know going to be uh, really targeted more for parents. So how do parents prepare their children for a VUCA world? All right. Uh, and so any of you more than welcome to to uh you know to to join us for that and uh, please you know spread the word to your friends if any of your friends and relatives are parents and they are struggling to know what to do with their kids during this mco period like i say come and join us on thursday 2 to 3 p.m uh, for a, another session all right so thank you so much and you know stay safe everybody god bless